everyone, today I am here with Dim, who is an animal rights activist, and he has done a lot of undercover investigations. Most notably, he has worked for the documentary Dominion, which has helped change a lot of people and open up a lot of minds. Dim, it is such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, I, um, I wanted to sort of find out what's going on, see what it's like, I guess get an idea of what it's like going into these places, seeing what's going on, yeah. because how many people can say they've seen what goes on inside a slaughterhouse factory farm ever? Yeah. You know, it's a, something that people don't really see. I guess I got into that type of activism, I uh, started probably about five years ago, um, doing investigation work, purely because that's what helped me go vegan. So I thought that animals were treated well and they had a quick death and all of you know, the lies that we get fed. But then, yeah, I saw sort of house footage and I wanted to see it for myself because a lot of the videos were overseas or they were really old videos. Um, and yeah, I started um, going to factory farms and slaughterhouses both in Australia and overseas, countries like Vietnam, Thailand. Um, and yeah, a lot of people think, you know, uh, we live in Australia, everything, we have all these um, guidelines and all of these laws, but they mean absolutely nothing to the animals in these facilities. Um, yeah, every, every facility that I've been into, there's clear animal abuse, whether it's a slaughterhouse, whether it's a factory farm, whether it's um, RSPCA yeah, approved. Free range. Yeah, free range, organic, grass fed. These are just, um, you know, terms that the industry used to make the consumers uh, feel less guilty about the choices that they're making. Um, but yeah, they, every single pig farm that I've been onto, every single pig slaughterhouse that I've been inside, doesn't matter which animal it is, um, you know, there's, there were dead piglets um, along the walkway of the farms. Um, they, oh yeah, uh, by the way, it's perfectly legal for farmers to slam piglets into the concrete um, in front of the mothers um, if they deem them unprofitable. Every single place that I went into had this. So would you say that slaughterhouses in other countries other than Australia are very different from Australian slaughterhouses or Australian facilities? Um, I think the way that they stun the animals um, it is a little bit different but to be honest like the slaughterhouse the pig slaughterhouse that I went into in Thailand they were using a metal pole to stun the pigs they would smash them against the in, in the head and then um, stab them in the throat to, to kill them. Uh, in Australia we use gas chambers so they lower them down into CO2 gas and they end up burning from the inside out. To be completely honest, um, the pigs were dying quicker in Thailand than what they do in, in Australia. They, was, they suffer a lot more in Australia in the gas chambers than you know, being quickly um, you know, hit over the head and knocked unconscious. But even then, a lot of the pigs were still waking up um, while they were being stabbed. You could still hear them making sounds um, while the blood's pouring out of their neck. The same thing happens in Australia as well though. Uh, there's been slaughterhouses that I've been to where um, pigs are drowning in the scalding tank. So they're meant to be gassed and then they're meant to be stabbed in, in the throat and they're meant to be dead by that stage. But um, a lot of the pigs end up drowning alive. Same with the chickens as well. There's chicken slaughterhouses in Australia that end up, you know, they miss the blade. It's an automated blade. Um, that's just their throat and they end up going into the scalding tanks and they end up drowning. Um, the RSPCA does nothing about that. Um, they, they got told about it, that this place was in southeast, um, southeastern suburbs in Melbourne, in Australia, and they're still operating now. That's the main reason that I, that I got into this type of activism, purely because not many people want to do that work. They, it's a risky job. Um, a lot of the time, you know, you, you end up um, uh, ruining your mental health pretty much because you're seeing awful, awful things um, in these facilities. Um, but I think that in order for people to change, they need to be able to see the truth. And the truth is hidden every day by the consumer because we go to Coles and we go to all these other supermarkets and um, people think that they're buying humane RSPCA approved, um, you know, dead animals and they they think that the animals died straight away, but they don't. You mentioned before that they're doing nothing about the animal cruelty that you've witnessed. Yeah. Do you think the animal abusing industries are more protected than activists? Because I know plenty of activists have been uh, prosecuted and criminalized yeah. for exposing animal cruelty, mm -hmm. yet nothing gets done about this 
cruelty. There's been numerous, uh, you know, investigations showing clear animal abuse, um, you know, facilities torturing animals. And a lot of the time, you know, they might get a fine, uh, but no one gets sent to jail for abusing the animals. Um, a lot of the time it's the activists that are getting, you know, much higher penalties, um, sometimes looking at jail time purely for recording the animal cruelty. Um, because they'll say that they're breaching biosecurity measures and that they're trespassing and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I had to go to court for trespassing um, and we, we got a fine for trespassing onto the slaughterhouse um, filming animal abuse. But the animal abusers got nothing. The police officers were there on the day where we were trespassing. They saw the animal abuse and they, they didn't stop it. We were there on the, in front of the kill floor um, stopping the facility from killing animals because it's clear animal abuse. The, the animals don't consent to having their throats slit and being killed. So, uh, but yeah, we ended up getting in trouble and they, they just wiped their hands clean because the, the animals that people eat aren't protected by law. They just, they're not, they're, they're considered as commodities. So, um, when activists are going into these facilities and, uh, you know, filming or rescuing these animals, they see that as theft of stock. Um, the, if that's not slavery, I don't know what is, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, but yeah, a lot of the time it's the activists that are getting in trouble. A lot of these laws, they, they're trying to put in place these ag-ag laws um, to stop activists from going into these facilities. Um, that, it's got nothing to do with biosecurity. It's got to do with us exposing the truth. and. Um, they're shitting themselves. They're scared. Wait, do they call it biosecurity? What does that mean? That you're possibly bringing in disease into a place? Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> what they're. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is so ironic. When the floors are covered in shit and piss, and yeah. they're all diseased. Yeah. The mm. like you go into some of these farms. There's rats everywhere. Um, the there are feral like there are cats everywhere in these facilities, um, and they're eating the piglets' bodies um, in front of the mothers because. You, you have dead animals everywhere. Cats are carnivores. They can smell that in the air. So a lot of these facilities have cats eating the animals. They're cockroaches. You've got rats everywhere. Um, they're not worried about biosecurity. They're, there's, you know, cobwebs everywhere all over the place. Um, they're just using that as an excuse. But a lot of the time, activists do wear gloves. They, you know, you, you go in there with biosecurity outfits, you know, hair nets and everything like that, so that you're not breaching any biosecurity measures. Uh, but yeah, that's just something that they bring up, you know, it's just an excuse, really. Well, the audacity to no. claim that it's a biosecurity risk as mm. well. Yeah. But when they have to pump these animals full of antibiotics and things just to make sure that everything. they don't die of disease and so yeah. do. Yeah. The dead animals everywhere. It's a decaying body. Um, there's going to be disease there. Yeah, it's quite ironic that they that they say that, but mm. it's just any excuse to stop people from seeing the truth. That's that's pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, Tash has. I haven't personally seen. Um, I've seen trucks on the highway with cattle and cows and um, sheep, but I've never seen the inside of a slaughterhouse or factory farm. I think if I did, it would absolutely break me. Yeah. Um, so I can't imagine the toll it would have taken on you psychologically to have done that. But Tash, yeah. you've seen the inside of places? Yes, I've been into a couple of egg facilities. Um, the caged, the cage-free and the supposedly free-range eggs. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically no difference except they're put into a bigger cage. And um, yeah, all the egg-laying hens are sent to slaughter when they're considered spent and can no longer lay, lay, lay eggs. Yeah, a lot of these places as well that say free-range, um, they're not free-range. I don't know what percentage it is, but a lot of these facilities actually cage up the chickens and then they just market it as, as free-range. People don't know. Mm. They, you know. They might have some free-range chickens on the property, but they just market it because people, it makes them feel better. Mm, exactly. Right? The, and I remember back then, yes, like when, when I used to buy eggs, yeah. I thought I was doing something by grabbing the free range, free range dozen. Yeah. yeah, but like you said, Tash, the free range farm, it's just a big cage. There's, mm. you know, tens of thousands of these chickens in one shed um, and chickens have a pecking order. And so, you know, any more than a hundred chickens, they, there's no pecking order. They, they end up just pecking each other. That's why they burn their beak off at, you know, when they're first born. 
they'll, they'll burn it off or cut it off、um, so that they don't injure each other. And they、mm. don't care about the birds harming. The only reason they care about the birds harming each other is because they're going to lose money.、Um, you know, that, that's all they care about. Yeah. They're, they're dollar. Yeah, there's no legal framework as to what the term free range means. So a lot of activists have found. Uh, facilities where there's the caged facility and the free range, and all the eggs just get mixed together. So,、yeah. often the caged eggs are still in the free range、mm. as well. So, there's also that sort of issue, but obviously, either way, it means nothing to the animals. Yeah, I think、um, a lot of people, they, even people that eat animals, if they went onto a kill floor and they witnessed the animals being killed, They, they couldn't handle it. A lot of these slaughterhouse workers end up getting PTSD. That's what I've got now from witnessing you know, what's happened to animals. And I care about animals, but these guys don't even care and they still get all these mental illnesses because of that. Well, no、um, one wants to work in these places, do they? Yeah. Which is why we see so many、uh, refugees and immigrants work in these places because、yeah. they don't have a choice. Yeah, I saw the same thing in Thailand. I went inside、um, a chicken slaughterhouse in Thailand and a pig slaughterhouse in Thailand. And Uh, the Thais don't want to work in these facilities, so they get the refugees from other neighbouring countries to come because they're desperate for the work. Same thing happens in Australia, US, UK, it doesn't matter where you go, a lot of the workers are immigrants or you know, they rely heavily on drugs and alcohol to numb themselves.、But、yeah, it's a horrible situation.、Yeah. I've seen a lot of people online when I bring up anything to do with veganism, they start to lecture me on immigrant workers picking my vegan vegetables and fruits. And、yeah. I think、um, that it's just not comparable to immigrant workers having to work in these facilities. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, we need to eat plants to survive, we don't need to eat animals to survive. And so, out of necessity, yes, like, we, you know, we need to eat plants, but we don't need to eat animals. So, we shouldn't be putting. You know, it's obviously an animal rights issue.、Um, they're having these slaughterhouses, but it's a human rights issue as well. Like, we're putting people into th- these situations where they're getting PTSD, they're seeing blood and hearing screams all day, so they become desensitized to it. There's a lot of、um, studies that are being done on areas that have slaughterhouses, and the crime rate increases, the drug and alcohol abuse increases,、um, violence against women increases dramatically because these workers come home. They've, They're punching animals every day,、mm-hmm. and so they end up harming their wives and their partners、um, in the same way because they're desensitized to it. Yeah, it's a really sad situation, but I think when people see the truth and they can see what's happening to animals, if they truly are against animal cruelty, then they shouldn't be paying for animal cruelty. It's that simple. You know, there, there is no humane way to kill an animal that doesn't want to die. And, I've seen thousands of animals being killed right in front of my eyes, and not one animal willingly walks to their death. They fight to their very last breath, just like we would if we were in their situation.、Um, yeah, so I think,、uh, you know, I think it, it's all about education. Like, people like to look at vegans and say that, you know, we're pushy and we're extreme, but what's more extreme? Being compassionate to animals and just leaving them live their own lives, or Stabbing them in the throat against their will. Do you know what I mean?、Mm-hmm. All we're trying to do as vegans is to educate people to align their morals with their actions. Like, we have the same beliefs. We believe animal cruelty is wrong, so we don't pay for it. The only difference between vegans and non vegans are the actions. I think the beliefs are the same. Yeah, so have you been onto any other facilities, like, for example, like a dairy or egg? Facility. Yeah,、um, I've been on to egg facilities, I've been on dairy facilities.、Um, I remember being on a dairy farm once.、Um, I wasn't trespassing, by the way, it was fine to be on the farm.、Uh, and yeah, the, the, there was a milking station with all of the cows、um, on this circular、um, machinery, and they were all facing inwards. And there was a vet there that was literally shoving their entire arm into the cow's anus to check whether or not they were pregnant. Um, so, in the dairy industry, obviously the cows need to be pregnant、um, to produce milk, and then they steal the babies from the mothers, and they do this every year.、Um, so, the vet was going around, wasn't changing the glove at all, just shoving their fist straight into the anus of one cow, pulling their fist out, and then going to the next cow, and the next cow, and the next cow. So, once again, people want to talk about biosecurity, about activists. You're literally fisting multiple cows, and You're spreading feces all over the cow. So, if one cow did have an infection, then they all would.、Um, but yeah, they, they don't consent to that. 
people can call it whatever they want. They can call it artificial insemination, but it's rape. You know what I mean? You can't put a body part into someone else's body part without their consent. Like, if we did that to a human, we'd call that rape. But Even if we did it to a pet, people would be outraged it would be called rape if someone did that to a, a pet. Yeah, they would say, yeah, if you, if you have a companion animal at home, like a dog or a cat, and you did that, people would think that you were so strange, uh, but, you know, people love their dairy. They, they think that it's their milk, but n not realizing that they've had to impregnate a mother against their will, steal their baby, kill the baby, and then, and then drink the breast milk. So like, I just, I can't understand how we're still doing that. I, I can in some way because uh, there's casomorphins in dairy milk. And so people are addicted similar to morphine. That's why you can have a vegan cheese that tastes delicious and you can have a, you know, a, a dairy cheese. It doesn't even taste as good, but people will go back to the dairy cheese because of the casomorphins in it. Uh, it's sad, like it's a sad addiction to have because there's so much suffering involved with it, but so many plant-based options now, you know, oat milk, soy milk, rice milk, all these options are out there. Uh, I think people are just scared to change. They, they're so used to, you know, living the same life every day in, day out. They have their own shit to deal with. Um, and so getting them to change something that they do three times a day, it can be quite daunting for people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, every dairy farm that I've been to, it's horrible. Like they're, they're um, taking the breast milk that was intended for their baby multiple times a day. And then the, the slaughterhouse that I've been to where they kill these dairy cows, um, it's sad, like they, they live a life of misery. They get their babies stolen from them every year and then they get their, their throat slit in the end of it because they're not producing enough milk for the farmers. Like, what a way to go out. I've yeah. also bred all these animals to be extremely physically uncomfortable yeah. too. So even if they are, let's say, free range on a field because these cows have been genetically manipulated to produce, I think it's something like they've managed to increase milk production in the last 40 years by what, what is it? The double, quadruple oh, more, yeah, it's something like quadruple. insane. Yeah. Mm. yeah, the amount of yeah. milk they produce. So the poor things have such heavy udders and that just yeah. would be so uncomfortable. And the same with chickens, they're bred to be so big. Yeah. Like, can they stand? You would have seen them firsthand. Yeah, so the chickens that I've seen um, in, in these facilities, they're, they're meant to be killed at six weeks old. So, um, you know, if you do rescue a chicken from these facilities, they don't live no longer than a year, a year and a half because of that. Their body is just growing so fast um, because we've manipulated their genetics over the years. You know, six weeks old, like that's a baby. That's the chickens that people eat. They go to KFC or, you know, you go to any supermarket, you're eating babies no longer than six weeks. And then they end up at the slaughterhouse and they can barely walk. The majority of them have broken bones by the time that they get to the slaughterhouse because um, the, their body isn't meant to grow that big. It's as simple as that. Mm. Yeah, same thing with the cows. They, the cows end up getting um, like uh, udder infection called mastitis because they're being milked so often. Um, so you get blood, you get pus, you get feces in the dairy milk. You can't take that out. You can, you know, clean it in some way, pasteurize it, whatever they call it, but um, you don't take away the feces and the pus and the blood. And people will drink that. They eat that. Every time you buy you know, cheese or yogurt or any dairy product, you're having that in there. So people can say, you know, the vegan cheese tastes like shit, but if you're eating dairy, you're literally eating shit. There's, mm. there's shit and piss in every dairy product. Yeah. And there's no legal standard to have a limit on the amount of pus that's in dairy in Australia. Um, I think America has a limit, but they call it somatic cell count, yeah. Thank you so much, Tim, for coming on and talking about your first-hand experiences. It's been, I would say it's been a pleasure, uh, <laughs> but obviously it's quite a heart-wrenching thing to hear and yeah. for yourself more so, having seen it firsthand. So I really appreciate you coming here and helping educate people on the topic. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, if I can ask anything from anyone, it's just to watch the footage that is already out there. There's a website called don'twatch.org. Um, it's don'twatch.org. Uh, you go to the website, it goes for six minutes. You can watch the video. It'll take you a short amount of time than to eat a meal. Do you know what I mean? And all I ask is for people to just see the footage that I've helped get. Um, and you know, then you can make an educated decision on whether or not you want to participate in this anymore. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. <laughs>